Maybe we should move over there so we can see that. Good morning and welcome to Brownville Community Church, virtual style. It's good to see everyone. Um, last week, as you probably know, because of the storm, it was just myself and Ginny Wado, and we had a, a long, very intimate time. And it was truly an example of when two yeah. or three are gathered in his name. Uh, God us. And so it was quite sweet, but I miss all of you. And um, I just have a couple announcements as usual, and then I'll ask for your announcements. Um, the first thing is when we are all um, together, probably you should mute your microphone. Um, right now is fine, but sort of when the music, when we get ready to sing, I'll ask you to mute your microphone because when we all sing together, um, the music doesn't come through because of the powers of technology, I'm not sure. Um, so that will just be something that we'll need to do. Um, a couple things uh, to think about is, uh, I'm still hoping that we can do Christmas Eve outside in the pavilion. So um, it, perhaps some of us, or maybe you all are talking how, hopefully we can make that happen. Um, I want to thank Barbie for setting up all the beautiful direct uh, decorations in the church. If you've been by or looked in, she has a Christmas tree. Um, she made lots of hats and put them on the tree. And Judy McDougal knit mittens, um, lots of them and put them on the tree. So just, just gorgeous. Um, What's your today, mitten? going to do the service a little bit differently. Um, obviously it's differently because it's virtual but we're actually going to be hopefully doing a little bit of a Christmas pageant. So if you got my message, um, I asked you to bring things if you have like bells or scarves or crowns. If you don't, that's okay. Um, but we will all kind of do the parts if you have those things. Um, I do want to ask uh, before we begin, if anybody else has any announcements for us? Anything? that needs to be known I about- I think uh, going out to the pavilion is too much. Oh, really? The snow is so bumpy and icy and uh, Walter and I talked about it last night and the yard maybe would yeah. be better. Okay, that sounds- It's in the cars or whatever, but walking to the pavilion, it's not safe. Okay, thank you for letting me know that because I think you all have snow. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. We do. Yes. We do. And I'm looking out my window and there's green grass here in Bangor. <laughs> Hardly any snow. I mean, just- You southern people. We yeah. need to go to Bangor. <laughs> come to my, come to my <laughs> front yard. Um, okay, I'm gonna go find the camera. Just send us a picture. Yeah, there we go, I will. Um, so so we'll, let's, we'll just sort of keep talking about that um, uh, as we get closer. So any other announcements or things to think about? And if not, I'm going to say, let us be in the spirit of worship. And we will begin with the lighting of the Advent wreath. And Ginny is going to read the part of uh, lighting the Advent wreath. And Brad, my husband, if you can see, I don't know if you can see on the little screen where the manger scene is, there's an Advent wreath and he, hopefully is tuning in and is going, because he's in another room, is going to light the Advent candles um, for today. So Ginny, would you please begin? Soon we shall celebrate the birth of Jesus. We worship God in our hearts. And we are reminded of the words the angel said on that first Christmas day. Behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all people. We light this candle to proclaim the coming of the light of God into the world. For the coming of this light, there is joy. Joy that is ours, not only at Christmas, but always. Thank you, Jenny. And if you all can see, uh, Brad lit the two candles, the two purple candles for hope and peace, and then the joy candle, the pink candle for today. And now, um, Larry and Ginny are going to read the call to worship for us. Rejoice. The Spirit of God 
is sending us. To bring good news to the oppressed, to comfort the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, to proclaim the year of favor among God's people. Rejoice. The work of the Spirit is calling us. To rebuild ancient relationships ruined by injustice. To repair the cities as places of hope. To restore land devastated across generations. To proclaim the year of favor among God's people. Rejoice. The glory of the Spirit is leading us. To cast off any faint spirit and put on the middle a mantle of praise, the fruit as the plantings of the Holy One, to display God's glory. Come, let us worship in joy. Thank you. And Barbie, are you wanting to light the candles on your wreath there as well? Well, I'm just getting the candles on. Okay. Got a couple more to go. Okay. So while you're doing that, I'm going to try to share a screen here for the... Uh, for the responsibility of the psalm. So just give me a moment. Can you all see the psalm? Yes. Psalm 126. So what I'll ask is that you mute your microphones if you can right now. I don't know how to do that actually. Okay, it might be in the upper right hand of your screen. You'll see a microphone sometimes and you, you can't, that's all right. We'll just. No, I don't see one either. Okay, no problem, no problem. So we let us, no, you go right ahead. So let us recite Psalm 26 responsibly. And I've got to make you guys smaller so I can read it actually. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouths were filled with laughter and our tongue was shouted of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done things for them. The Lord has done great things for us and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the waterfalls in the nature. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who are weeping, bearing the seed for the joy, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Good job, everyone. So what we'll do now is I will, um, it's a little bit different than we normally do, but I will do the time of prayer before we start our, um, start our pageant, our virtual pageant. And I want to ask if there are any joys or concerns uh, that should be lifted up at this time. Um, I, the only thing that I have to say is I would like to put the manger scene out on the front steps, if that would be okay. Certainly, I was I thinking think about that. So well, that would I thought about it in the middle of the night the other night, and Walter McDougall said that he's get glad, I think, in the night. <laughs> we all are blessed, and we thank you, Barbie, for being such a, a, a wonderful uh, and faithful servant. Um, uh, because living across the, from the church is a true blessing for all of us. So uh, you are one of our joys, certainly this Thank morning. You. Um, any other joys or concerns uh, at this time? I was talking to Walter McDougall yesterday, and he was hoping to be on this Zoom with us, but I guess he didn't quite make it. I haven't seen him or heard from him. Yeah, and I haven't heard from him either. Um, I know he's able to Zoom. He, he Zooms every Sunday, he said, with his children. Yeah. And um, so I will call him after this because I truly had expected him to be here as well. Yeah, me too, me too. Um, let's, let's just hold Walter, in our, Walter and Judy in our prayers um, mm -hmm. this morning. Um, I also want to lift up, and this 
is probably, you know, tangential, but as you know, my daughter um, is engaged and her fiance's uncle and cousin both have COVID in Morocco. Her mm -hmm. uncle is a professor. I mean, his uncle is a professor and he's on a ventilator in Morocco. And um, I, he's in the capital city, which is great. However, um, Morocco is still, and I don't think I'm saying anything wrong, it's still kind of a third world country. And so um, Hossam and his family, his mother, they're all just beside themselves um, that this mm -hmm. uncle is a ventilator and that the cousin works in the hospital. So I guess it's to be expected to some, to some extent, but I don't know, but that she has COVID. I, my understanding is she is younger and faring better, but um, I ask you to hold them in her prayers. It, you know, it has Maddie very anxious. Uh, she can't go back right now. Um, family are, live together, they're very extended. And so it's, uh, it's concerning. So please hold them in your prayers. Are there any other joys or concerns um, to be lifted up at this time? Okay, well then let us be in the spirit of prayer and then um, we will go to the next part of our service. Let us pray. Here we are, most patient God, in the third week of our Advent journey. You alone know how that journey is going. At the beginning of the season, we promised to make this Advent different. Or maybe we promised that this year in our heart of hearts to really prepare ourselves spiritually to receive the gift of your son. We confess, O oh God, that we so easily have often given into the expectations of people in situations around us. We have allowed at times, the times of quiet we promise for you to slip away. Forgive us in our distractions. Help us renew our preparations for your coming. We look forward to your promise to change things, to bring life and strength and courage to us, eyes to see, ears to hear, and tongues to speak your word. So we wait a little longer and move at a slower pace and with a great deal more patience, O oh Lord. Continue to be with us, O oh God, as we learn to wait with you. This morning, we lift up in thanksgiving and joy our fellow member Barbie, who was so attentive to our church's needs living across the street. And we are thankful we have a manger scene that we can put out on our steps and proclaim to everyone church. And we are still here and praying for everyone in our community and the world. This morning, we pray deeply for Walter McDougall and Judy, who were not able to be with us here on Zoom worship, and we pray for the members of Hosam's family, his uncle who's on a ventilator due to COVID, and his cousin. We pray for their healing and that they can feel your touch and um, the healing of Jesus and the healing of God during this time. We now come to you in silence, confessing what is on our hearts and minds. We do so trusting that you want to hear our petitions and that you have already forgiven what needs to be forgiven. And we believe that our prayers will be answered in your time and in your almighty wisdom. We now pray as your son, our savior taught us. Our father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done, will be done on earth, 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 earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day, day our daily bread. And forgive and us give our trespasses, as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. evil. That is kingdom, kingdom, and power, and power forever. Lord, and Amen. 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 Thank <laughs> you.
So I just want to introduce a few things before we start. Uh, typically, as I said, this Sunday would have been our pageant Sunday. And I always love this Sunday in the church because it is full of fun and joy and flexibility. Uh, and the congregation just exudes it on this third Sunday of Advent. Interesting times that we are in calls for some adaptation. And so welcome to this year's virtual pageant brought from all our homes. And this year, we all will play all of the parts. We will truly embody our congregational roots. Um, but before we begin, I want to say a little bit about Mary, Jesus's mother. If we were not having a pageant today, we would have read and heard Mary's voice lifted up in the beginning of the gospel according to Luke. It is a passage known as the Magnificat, which means the canticle or the song of Mary. It is one of the oldest hymns in the New Testament and likely was sung in worship services. Prior to her, to her singing the song in the gospel according to Luke, the angel Gabriel visited and told her that God had found favor with her and that she would bear a son of the Most High who would be given the throne of David. Her cousin Elizabeth, upon seeing her said, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Despite the utter incons in incomprehensibility of her situation, Mary says, here I am, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Mary's song is one of praise and thanksgiving, yet it is also a very daring song. It is a song of reversals. It is a song that declares that the world as it is, is about to turn and change. So to set the stage of our virtual pageant, here are Mary's words. Words of joy, like the pink candle that was lit earlier, and words of bravery and faith, and I hope you can hear them. So let me get my papers here so I can read them. I don't know them by heart. Mary says, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to his ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Today, we will remember, we will remember the story of love that came down at Christmas, the birth of a tiny baby who grew up to show us and the world how to live and lead with our hearts. A baby born of a strong mother who dared to speak up and out and claim what she knew about her son to be, God's son, who would teach the world the truth of what matters, be the living truth of God's work of reversal in the world. I now give to you the story of the wondrous events surrounding the humble birth of our servant king, Jesus, the King of Peace. The stage has been set, let us begin. From Luke chapter 2. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken by Quirinius when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and was expecting a child. So now if you've gathered a scarf or something, I ask you to don your scarves to remember Mary and Joseph's trip. 
to his hometown of Bethlehem. Wonderful. And I don't know if you saw, but, but Brad has moved um, Mary and Joseph into our manger scene. So they've made the, the travel. And you'll, if you watch the little manger scene, you'll see the characters uh, enter in. So now we will sing O Little Town of Bethlehem. And just give me a moment. And I will share the words and share the music. And you, if you can, uh, mute your mic. So you can't hear me. While they were there, the time came for her to do, deliver her child. And she gave birth to her first son, firstborn son, and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. So now it's time to bring on your animal sounds. I think Brad's got his animals in. All right. <laughs> now, now we will move on to our next him away in a manger. You all see me again? Yeah. From Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord, Lord shone around them, terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you news of great joy for all the people. 
To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there were a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those he favors. Then ring the bells and ring in the angels. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God, for all had heard and seen as it had been told them. Let us usher in the shepherds and with their sheep, using our best sheep sounds. Ma, 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 ma. And hold on. Now share our next song, which will be Go Tell It on the Mountain.
I guess we didn't get the refrain. Sorry about that. My musical editing skills uh, leave something to be desired. Sorry about that. In the time of King Herod, in the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observe this star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. And Herod called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king had set out, when they had heard the king, they set out. And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw where the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. Let us now hear the carol, Star Child. Entering, they saw the child, Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. They opened their treasure chest. They offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they went home by another road. Let us don our crowns as the wise men enter. Very nice. <laughs> we will now join in singing We Three Kings. <laughs> Mm -hmm. 
Our pageant is now finished, but the story of Jesus's birth remains with us still. May you keep your hearts open to all that you meet, be they small or helpless, hungry or blue, and you will always come to surely know the meaning of Emmanuel, God with us. This is the meaning of Christmas, of God who came to dwell among us. May it bring you joy today and may it stay with you all your days to come. Now may we join in singing our closing hymn, Joy to the World, all three verses. One seventy one. Can you see the screen? The words, everyone? We can't see the words. Oh. They're not coming up. Okay, let me try again. There they are. Now can you see them? You got them now. Good, good. Okay. When I go here to do the music, can you still still see them? There they go again. No, we can't see them now. We lost them. Huh. Okay. come to the end of our pageant and I say may the Lord bless you and keep you may the Lord make his face to shine upon you may the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace now and always go in peace and love and joy and hope to serve the Lord amen amen and I will leave this open so that if you want to to continue to visit and talk as we do at church afterwards you may and I've just seen the um the setup of the manger scene, I've just had a chance and I thought Brad did a wonderful job. So thank you, Brad, for, for bringing in our people to our manger scene today. So I, I will um, leave, but if you want to all talk and continue to visit, uh, you certainly may. Um, and I, I look forward and hope that we can all be together next week. And, um, and if there's anything I can do for you uh, between now and then, don't hesitate to call me. I love you all. Because you should be able to see everybody that's in here. I've never been able to. Oh, you haven't? No.
participants. It should be participants, I would think. There's seven participants. Hey, John. Hi. How are you? Hi. Don't you fall asleep? I'm trying to figure this thing out. How I could see everybody. Hey, Anna. Hi, Rose. Hi. Hi. It's it's Cindy and Dorothy. We we don't have Zoom, but we're on via the telephone. Hi, how are you? Hello, hello. We're hanging in. Oh, okay. So what if we push that? I'm saying not 